With CPUs getting hotter and hotter, gamers need excellent cooling performance that doesn't break the bank. Hi, this is Z-Rock on Tech, and today we're taking a look at a brand new 360 AIO from ASUS. This is the Tough Gaming LC2 360 ARGB AIO from ASUS. Wow, that was a mouthful, am I right? All right, look, ASUS did send me out this AIO, but this video is not sponsored by ASUS. So that means all thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are my own. I always try to provide my audience with my genuine thoughts and opinions on any product that I review. Now, it may be an opinion you don't like, but it is still my opinion. Now, when ASUS sent me this AIO, they also sent me a Z790 motherboard. I plan to cover that in my next video. So drop a comment below letting me know what you wanna know about the motherboard and get subscribed so you don't miss it. Now, after I received the AIO and the motherboard from ASUS, I made a community post asking all of you, my audience, what CPU I should use to do all of my testing with. And unfortunately, you all voted for the 14900K. And I say unfortunately because ASUS can only send me ASUS products and Intel is not currently willing to work with me. So the only way that I can get a 14900K for testing purposes is if I go out and buy it myself. And so that's exactly what I did. Honestly, I think most of you just want to see me broke because I don't see a lot of people rushing out to get a 14900K. I'm just saying. Now, normally I wouldn't mind buying such an expensive CPU. After all, I love high-end PC hardware. But honestly, the 14900K is just a bad product to me. And here's why. It's insanely expensive. It's a minor upgrade, if you can even call it that, over its predecessor, the 13900K. It's extremely power hungry. It runs very hot. And worst of all, even after Intel added all this additional power, the 7800X3D is still a faster gaming CPU. But then it dawned on me. The 14900K is actually the perfect CPU to really test any CPU cooler with. And the reason why is because if the CPU cooler, in this case, the Tough Gaming AIO, if it can handle a 14900K, then you have to give it a glowing recommendation at that point. I mean, the 14900K is arguably the hottest CPU on the market currently. So if a cooler can handle it, then yeah, that's a no brainer at that point. And now when I say handle it, I mean run Cinebench, do a full 10 minute stress test and keep it below 100 C. And to be completely honest with you, I didn't think that was actually possible until I started making this video. If you search on YouTube for 14900K reviews, you will easily find several videos showing the 14900K immediately hitting 100 C while stress testing in Cinebench. And this is a common theme for multiple creators using all sorts of different AIOs. Simply put, the 14900K is a hot CPU. Now, with all of that being said, how does the Tough Gaming LC2 AIO stack up? Honestly, quite well. My base temperature while idle on the desktop was 26C on average for my CPU package and 23C on average for my CPU core temperature. My base CPU package power is 17 watts. My ambient temperature is 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 18.33 degrees Celsius. For my Cinebench multi-core test, my CPU package didn't break above 92C. My core temperature didn't break above 92C. My CPU package power held strong at 253 watts while the peak temperature was only 92C. Now, yes, we did check the box for thermal throttling here because 92C, while impressive in this case, is still very hot. But what you have to keep in mind here is that the 14900K was under 100% load for about 10 minutes straight. That is a lot. And when you really stop and think about it, the average gamer, the average PC user is never going to experience that. That is absolute worst case scenario. In most situations, most people will have temperatures way lower than that in most of their day-to-day -day tasks, including gaming. And we're gonna talk about gaming here in just a second. Now for my Cinebench single core test, my CPU package didn't break above 69C, nice. My core temperature didn't break above 69C either, also nice. My CPU package power maxed out at 121 watts. I did not have any thermal throttling on the single core test. In addition to Cinebench, I also ran a benchmark test and Intel's XTU software or the Extreme Tuning Utility software. The maximum temperature reached was only 91C, so slightly below that of Cinebench. In addition to that, I also ran a benchmark test in OCCT. The maximum on the CPU package is either 83 or 89C, depending on 
which metric you want to read, I will have both highlighted on the screen for you. That is with a max CPU package power of 253 watts. It's also important to know that Intel does in fact have a design flaw and so because of that, coolers cannot make proper contact and that is why I am using a contact frame. The one that I'm using is from NAB Cooling and I got it from Amazon for about $12 or so. Also, I did spread my thermal paste evenly all over the CPU. I did not do the P dot method. I did not do the X method. I did fully spread the thermal paste to get perfect coverage all over the CPU. And that is how I was able to obtain these awesome temperature results. Now that is all of my synthetic testing, but don't worry. I did run some gaming tests as well because hey, after all, gaming is what most of my audience does. And so that's actually gonna be the most relevant here. But synthetics are important for the people that care about it and also to show worst case scenario. And that means if you're happy with the worst case scenario results, then you're gonna love the gaming performance. But first I wanna give a quick shout out to all my Patreon members. Thank you all for your continued support. You are truly appreciated. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon member, I will have a link below the like button in both the pinned comment and the description. Now for gaming, I tested two games, Cyberpunk 2077 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I did run the in-game benchmark for both of the games and the resolution is 1080p because 1080p is the best way to test CPU performance. The higher you go in resolution, the more GPU bound you become. So I did test everything at 1080p. I'm not using any form of upscaling of any kind. And in Assassin's Creed, everything is fully maxed out. And in Cyberpunk 2077, I am using the ray tracing ultra preset. So just one step below the overdrive preset. And so that's why the frame rate is going to look incredibly low here. And finally, the GPU I'm using here is the RTX 3070, but that's not all that important for this test. We're really just focused on how well this tough gaming AIO can actually handle a 14900K in gaming situations. First up is Cyberpunk 2077. Again, this is the in-game benchmark at 1080p. As you can see, the CPU temperature is fluctuating between high 50s and low 60s. This is far below the 92C we saw in the synthetic test before. This is closer to what you will actually experience. I mostly show the synthetic test because that is what people have come to expect, but gaming, in my opinion, is a more realistic use case here. And as you can see, the Asus Tough Gaming LC2 360 ARGB AIO is handling the 14900K in Cyberpunk 2077 totally fine. Man. That is a long name for an AIO. Next up, I briefly walked the streets in Cyberpunk, and as you can see, our temperatures mirror what we saw in the benchmark. We are hovering between high 50s and low 60s, more or less. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Again, I ran the in-game benchmark, and all settings are fully maxed out at 1080p with no upscaling. As you can see, the CPU temperature is fluctuating between mid 50s and low 60s. This is slightly better than the Cyberpunk results, but overall, it's more or less about the same. Now, as you can see, this AIO is totally fine and more than capable in both gaming performance as well as synthetic performance, even on one of the hottest chips on the market, the 14900K. And so from that standpoint alone, it's easy to say, yeah, I recommend the AIO based on performance alone. But there are other questions that people will have regarding any AIO from any company. And I want to address some of that starting right now. So first of all, how much does this AIO cost? Well, the MSRP on it is $149. But at the time of filming, I see it on Amazon for $100. $129. So it's about $20 off currently at the time of filming. So the, it might still be on sale. If you're interested in buying it, you can save yourself 20 bucks. And if you take a look at the review score on Amazon it has a 4.5 star rating out of five stars, that's not bad at all. That's actually pretty good. And looking at some of the comments rated on Amazon as well, I can see that a lot of people seem to be quite happy with this AIO. So it definitely seems like most people who have purchased this product do in fact seem to like it. Now, one key component about this tough gaming AIO that I think is quite easy to overlook is the fact that Asus is actually offering a six year warranty on it. Let me put that in perspective for you about how important that is. First of all, the majority of PC gamers, at least in my experience, based on what I see on forums, my discord, my comment section, etc., most people seem to use air coolers. A, they're cheaper, B, they're easier to install, and C, 
there's been a lot of issues over the years with AIOs. And so a lot of people are scared to buy them because of clogs and the AIOs breaking and things of that nature. In fact, Greg Salazar has many, many videos covering this topic specifically with MSI. When a company can say, hey, we guarantee this product, we'll stand behind this product for six years. I don't think that's anything to scoff at. I definitely think that is consumer friendly. And in fact, I got to thinking about it. Well, is six years really that big of a deal? I mean, surely everybody's offering that now, right? Well, actually, no, I did some research. This is MSI's website and they have a three to five year warranty on all of their coolers. And as you can see, they have more AIOs that fall into the three year warranty than the ones that they have in the five year warranty. This is the Cooler Master page. And as you can see, they have many liquid coolers that fall in the two year warranty and then the three year warranty and then a few more that fall into the five year warranty. Lee and Lee seems to offer a flat five year warranty. Corsair is also split between a five and a six year warranty. So right now it seems like Corsair is the only other company that is starting to offer a six year warranty warranty on their new coolers. But there are a few more things that I think are incredibly important that we need to talk about, like decibel level, for example. You might have noticed by looking at this AIO that it has a decoupled pump. Now, when you see a decoupled pump like that, it tells you, first of all, that the designer of the AIO is not using the Asatec patent designed because if they were, the pump would be inside the head of the AIO. So in this case, they are not using an Asatec design, and that's totally fine. The idea behind the decoupled pump here is that Asus is hoping it will make the AIO quieter and minimize vibrations. And in all honesty, I do think it's actually working because I was fairly impressed with the overall decibel levels. I downloaded a decibel app on my iPhone. It's called Decibel X. I have no idea how accurate this app is, okay? Throw me a bone. Don't have any type of external decibel readers of any kind. So I'm, I'm doing the best with what I got to work with, okay? But based on this app, here are my decibel readings. So sitting idle at the desktop with a standard fan profile on this app, AIO, I recorded a decibel reading of 29 decibels more or less. And while stress testing under load with Cinebench, I recorded between 49 to 50 decibels. Now to put things in perspective, my room with nothing turned on is already about 27 to 28 decibels. So the fact that with the standard profile, I was sitting at about 29 decibels, that's incredibly quiet. That is very, very quiet. And even under full load, yes, obviously you hear it, it is definitely noticeable, but that's full load. And again, like I've already explained, most of the time you won't be under full load. But overall, I'm very impressed with how quiet this AIO actually is. Now, if you made it this far in the video, first of all, thank you. But secondly, if you've been paying attention, then you might've realized I haven't yet complained about the AIO. So does that mean it's perfect? No, it's not, but I mean, honestly, some of the things that I have to complain about are very subjective. I don't really have anything that I can complain about objectively. For example, I don't like the look of the AIO. I don't. I'm really big on putting together a beautiful PC that is customized and fit to a certain theme. And if you've been following me for a while, then you know about my Mario PC, you know about the Harry Potter PCs, and you've seen my personal PC, and you know the themes that I have and, and how I love that clean aesthetic. And in all honesty, I just don't think this AIO looks that great. And I mean, from a functionality standpoint, it's very quiet and it performs incredibly well, but that decoupled pump, in my opinion, is, incredibly noticeable and it's also an eyesore and it has a wire coming off of it that plugs into your motherboard because obviously it needs to go into the AIO pump slot. It's kind of hard to tuck that away. It's kind of hard to not make that noticeable. And I put this whole thing inside of an 011 D mini. And before you say, wait, that doesn't support a 360 AIO. Actually it does with a bracket. And I went out and I bought the bracket specifically for this video because I wanted to test it in that condition. And not only did the AIO fit and perform well with the bracket, Bracket. But one thing we all know about Lee and Lee is that they like to make cases that have glass on both sides so that you can see all of your components. And unfortunately, the decoupled pump here really stands out with that wire coming off of it. Additionally, all the fans that come in the box have a minimum of two wires coming off the fans, one to power the fan and then one to control the RGB. And to be fair, that's pretty standard across the board unless you're paying a lot of money for daisy chainable fans that link together. And many, many companies are doing that now, like Lee and Lee and Corsair, for example. And that's going to run you a lot more money. And so I do understand why these fans are like that, but still, 
that is that is a lot of wires it's a lot of cables to have to manage and so that was really one of my main complaints also the fans are not pre-installed on the radiator so you have to install it yourself additionally asus does provide their own thermal paste in the box with their branding on the tube and so if you didn't know asus does in fact make their own thermal paste now so there you go, fun fact for the day. But that thermal paste is not pre-applied to the pump head. You do have to put it on yourself. And so a few thoughts on this, and really this is six one way, half a dozen another. On one hand, it's kind of annoying not to have it pre-applied because you're like, oh great, one more thing I have to do, right? I have to get it just right. Thermal paste is messy, all that stuff. But then on the other hand, I've also had situations in the past where I have purchased an AIO, the thermal paste was pre-applied, and then I go to put the block down on the CPU, I mess it up, I have to raise it back up and put it back down. And at that point, I've kind of messed up the pre-applied thermal paste. And so I, I think I do prefer not having the thermal paste pre-applied to the block, but something to be aware of in case you're curious about that type of thing. Outside of that, everything else was pretty much straightforward. All the screws you need to connect the fans to the radiator are supplied in the box. But with all that being said, this Asus Tough Gaming LC2 360 AIO does in fact support AM4 and AM5 mounting as well as Intel, of course. Oh, and uh, one more thing, I just remembered this. And honestly, this is a little bit more objective based. I, I actually had somebody in my Discord ask about this specifically. So I will say because of the decoupled pump, I think that adds a layer of rigidity to the flexibility components for the AIO. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but basically I feel like the tubes coming off the head are not as flexible in terms of routing capabilities all because of the decoupled pump. I've worked with AIOs before where basically you can turn the tubes or the head almost however you need them to go. But in this case, it did seem like I was kind of more locked in on just going a direct path with the tubes. But at the same time, I don't really see that being a huge problem. It could have also just been because I was doing it from a top mounting standpoint. If you put it into a case where you're doing a front mount with a 360 AIO, then you know you might have a little bit more flexibility there. I don't know, I didn't test it that way, but that is something I just wanna make known for the person who asked in my Discord. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is AIOC, and we're going out on a high note here because AIOC is incredibly awesome. Now, it is mostly a motherboard feature, but your CPU cooler definitely matters, and I will definitely definitely cover it in greater detail in my upcoming Z790 motherboard review video. Again, get subscribed so you don't miss it. But basically, here's what you need to know. Asus has AI basically like everyone else now. And instead of you having to bash your head against the wall trying to find the right tuning for your CPU to get every ounce of performance out of it, you can basically say, hey, look, it may not be perfect, but it's gonna be better than me spending two or three hours fine tuning the system. Let me push a button and get better performance. And that's exactly how it works. You literally push a button, restart your PC, AIOC kicks in, it evaluates the quality of your cooler and its cooling capabilities, and, and it compares it to your CPU and it says, okay, hey, I think we can take you from A to B. I think we can give you this level of a performance increase. And so what you're looking at here is on the left, default numbers without AIOC. And this is coming from Intel's XTU application or extreme tuning utility application. And on the right, this is after AIOC. And as you can see, we basically got an increase across the board with every core. And that was literally at the push of a button. Now, a couple of things you need to understand about this. These are not locked numbers. This doesn't mean that core one is always going to be, you know, 6.2 gigahertz or anything like that it basically means we're gonna try to boost up to that when there is thermal headroom available based on whatever you're doing so basically in lighter workloads you're gonna get the higher speeds right if you're running a game that's not that demanding you're gonna get higher speeds but in games that are more demanding you're gonna be on the lower end of things but it's still higher than where you were to begin with I'll give you an example so if you look at cyberpunk 2077 right here you can see that before I was mostly hovering around 5600 megahertz and now after AI IOC, we're closer to the 57 to 5800 megahertz on average 
leverage. Yes, it's gonna rise and fall and fluctuate. Of course, that's how CPUs work, where more often than not, hitting above that 5,600 megahertz threshold from where we were before. So literally at the push of a button, we got better gaming performance. I also saw an improvement on the Cinebench side of things, whereas before AIOC, our maximum clock speed was six gigahertz. Now our maximum clock speed is up to 6.2 gigahertz. And in addition to that, our overall multi-core score also improved with AIOC. Now, the only downside here is that our temperatures did go from 92C up to 100C. But again, that's because the AI knows, hey, we have more headroom here. Let's push it. And of course, over time, it will get a little bit better because what it's doing is it's constantly training the algorithm. It is constantly evaluating your cooler and every day saying, okay, hey, is it cooling as good as it was before? Is it cooling even better now? Because it's accounting for times that you may reapply thermal paste or upgrade your thermal paste or switch out your fans and the list goes on and on. So it's constantly paying attention to your cooler. And if you get tired of it doing that, if you're happy with where the results are, you can actually go into the BIOS and disable it from learning about your cooler even more so that the results are more consistent and they don't fluctuate as much. Okay, look, I understand that was a rapid fire session of AIOC information, but I wanted to include it at the end of this video because it is a really cool feature that I think more people need to know about and your CPU cooler absolutely matters when it comes to that algorithm. Basically, the better the cooler you have, the better performance you're going to be able to get out of that AI overclock. And so I definitely wanted people to know, hey, this is a thing It exists. Be aware of it. Maybe, maybe take advantage of it if you don't feel like bashing your head against the wall for a couple of hours on fine tuning your system. So there you go. Now, with all that being said, overall, I definitely recommend this AIO. I do think it's a good quality product. I think the price is fair. I think you're getting really good value out of it. I'm not saying it's the best AIO on the market. Obviously, there are more expensive versions of AIOs out there that come with LCD displays, daisy chainable fans that connect together without all the wires. There's a lot of quality of life improvements that you can get with other AIOs on the market. But for the price, I definitely think this covers everything you need and then a little bit more. So I definitely recommend it. Hey, if you like this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button. It goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed, drop a comment down below. I wanna to talk to you about these things. And until next time, E-Rock out.